Good day, everyone. Um, it's another episode of our series of uh, Better Aging. And today I'm super happy to finally not just talk to doctors, but someone with a bit of a, a broader approach on better aging, but not broader, but not just medical, let's put it that way. So I'm very happy to um, welcome Fezal Alibai. I always have difficulties with your last name, uh, Fezal. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Alibai. All good. All good. Um, Fezal has founded a company called uh, Kinetic Care. Kinetic Care is, correct me if I'm saying something stupid here, um, a family health uh, office. That's correct. Um, what I like very much about your approach is that we are not just looking at you know, pure medical care, but we are looking at two more aspects of, of the entire concept uh, of health, which one is emotions and two, relationships. And to me, it makes perfect sense that uh, if you are surrounded by a lot of negative emotions or, uh, you know, bad thought patterns or bad relationships, it somehow uh, will affect your health. And this is exactly what I would like to talk to you about, Fezal. Um, can you maybe let us know how positive or emotions in general and healthy relationships could contribute to better aging. So first, thank you very much, Peter, for having me. Thank you for taking the risk to go a little broader, a little wider. So I want to take a step back, if you don't mind, and sure. just look at that. Remember, the human system is the most intelligent and complex system that exists. And for us to take a single dimensional approach, which you're referring to as medical, to be able to master or hack this complex system, to me feels a little bit basic, okay? With all due respect to the medical industry. So for us, I mean, this whole happened due to my own illness. So what happened was when I was diagnosed with stage three cancer and I asked the doctors what happened, they couldn't explain. And the founder of the cure was my advisor. And that to me was very dumbfounded that you have a supposed cure, which is chemo uh, for my, my situation, which had 10 tumors, you know, big ego, big cancer. And, but at the same time, you can't tell me the origin and my DNA was clean. So that's how it all began for me to go into a state of self-reflection and introspection and fast forward today, 17 years right? Where seven years, I ran a family health office for my family, and now 10 years for others. We look at humans from a multidimensional perspective, which we call an integrative perspective, where we look at the physical, which is beyond also some of the medical pieces. So we look at, we look at nutrition, we look at fitness, we look at sleep health, gut health, brain health, epigenetics, genomics, drivers of behavior. We go as far as movement and posture, we go to cognoscopies for because dementia now is the elephant in the room. It's not cancer, right? So we're really even looking at the physical side is even broad medical, very broad. Then we look at, like you asked for, the mental, emotional, and the relational. And what I realized, and we look at, you know, my role personally, I'm the integrator. I look at source of disease. And when we speak to, I was just in London a few weeks ago. And I spoke to the professor of gastroenterology. And I said, professor, tell me that the individuals you see who have Crohn's, who have colitis, who have colon cancer, are you telling me that it's just medical? It's a straightforward genetic or, or, or you know, physical manifestation? He said, no. I said, then why are we not taking a broader approach? And he's like, well, we have people like you to now broaden that, right? So just like when you're asking, do good relationships or good thoughts or good emotions, what do they do? They release chemicals in our body that are positive, mm -hmm. right? That, are, that bring in, I mean, as you know, the endorphins and all of those things. But at the same time, the negative is the opposite, right? And the negative, if you look at, you know, you, you end up with, like myself, 
when until recently, not recently, a few years ago, where I had my own work on my gut, if I got stressed, my stomach would go sideways. And if you look at most people that we deal with as families, when they're having emotional or relational issues, the first thing that goes is their gut. And the second thing due to the gut is their sleep. This is a very common theme that is occurring across families who are being challenged by their family dynamics. Yeah. Right. So go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So I was just, uh, I wanted to, to, to jump in there because there's something that, I mean, personally, I can totally relate to this. No, um, uh, I mean, I see that in our uh, daily business, uh, uh, yeah. Right. Just to give you a few examples, you have someone coming, uh, arriving in Switzerland and, and we want to take care of them. And all of a sudden they, they are in the wrong clinic and you go like, Ugh! you know, and, and I can physically feel this, that it's harming me. I can feel it, you know, so. I, but I cannot always avoid these situations. Now, what what I would be interested in the uh, context of better aging what would you do with someone, let's say, coming from a wealthy family, having a lot of pressure on, you know, who's good, who's not, who's good for you, who's, who, who's honest with you, who's not? I mean, th there are tons of, let's say, emotional relationship related insecurities um, that I'm 100% convinced will affect uh, health to some extent how would you could you give us an example how you who you how you would work on on these let's say bad patterns yeah okay so what i'd do is let's break into two sides what one we can do individually and then one with external support right so i want to take a step back again sorry i keep taking a step back is what we look at is we say okay we look at first step is how do we build resilience But in reality, what we're looking for is how do we build anti-fragility? Because it's beyond resilience. It's agility and adaptability to whatever may come. COVID was a black swan, quote unquote, right? And for our families that were in our care, we said, it's game time. Because what we look at, we say, okay, how can we on a day-to-day -day basis make sure and keep filling our physical cup, our mental, emotional cup, and our relational cup? Okay, so every experience like the one we're having now will have a physical imprint, a mental emotional imprint, and a relational imprint, depending on the meaning you and I give to this experience and our response. Okay, so again, the meaning I give and you give to this experience and our response. Those are the only two things we control, Peter, in life, right? Yeah. So now how do I fill my physical cup? I do it through nutrition, through fitness, to good quality sleep, to maintain my gut, maintain my, 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 my brain quality, you know, and all of that. Now on the mental emotional, there's basic things. So one, the first one, obviously you eat well, you exercise, whether it's strength training, whether it's cardio, like myself, I play tennis twice a week, I swim twice a week, I trek twice a week, I rebound. I know it may sound a little crazy, but I do it because I don't want to be one-sided. I mean, you know, we have to be balanced, right? Now, when it comes to mental emotional, I have in front of me a journal, right? We give this to every family. And every day I journal. Every day I meditate. I start my day with meditation. I end my day with meditation, right? Because the how you start your day determines your day. How you end your day determines your sleep, hmm. right? So these are basic things that we don't need training for, right? We can, we can well, meditation, you might want to get training, but it's still things that are kind of free, Right. And so these would be very simple things that you could do yourself, right, without the external support. Now, on the relationship side, it's a little different, right? Because there, there is, you know, triggers that are going on. Now, there we work with families where we provide support, right? Because there we're, we're affected on the mental emotional relation by beliefs and patterns from this generation and from the past. Some may be serving you, some may not. So you may want to reconsider those beliefs and patterns, right? You also may want to look at some of the drivers of behavior that you have that are subconscious, that are been there and near wired for a very long time. And to want to maybe reconsider those drivers of behavior, 
from nutrition, fitness, and relationship. It's the knee-jerk response that just happens naturally, right? Because it's reactive, right? Then you would look at being in truth is that, am I living in alignment between my values, my talents, my aspirations? Am I living in integrity? Because that's where a lot of things start going wrong internally because I'm living two, three lives. You know, I'm, I have my family, you know, people at work, I have their work person and the other person. In family businesses and families, that also is divided. Can I, I cannot be my true self, right? But it all begins- Basically, say, it's, it's you are living expectations of others, right? Yes, yes. the impositions, the expectations, the judgment, but also let's give credit. We also have self-imposed expectations and impositions hmm. right, that we assume is being put on us, right? Hmm. I think the other piece is what we're never taught, at least I was not taught, which is self-love and self-care, right? What is my relationship with myself to begin with? Am I in a family where I'm trying to prove my worth? One of the chapters in my book is, am I good enough? That's probably 90% of next gen asking them that, themselves that question and trying to prove their worth. In my case, it was pretending to be proving my worth to my father when actually it was to myself, mm -hmm. right? So at the end of the day, it's relationship with myself, then my loved ones, and then the family at large. So I did not have a mentor. I did not have a coach. I did not have a support system, even though I was the CEO of a very large enterprise, right? In 15 countries, 10,000 employees, hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue, I did not have that support system. So that is something I would nudge, you know, a lot of the people listening or the families to consider, because that is something we cannot see our blind spots, Peter, as you know, right? Even when you drive a car, remember when you change lanes, you look at the blind spot because the mirrors are not able to show you those. It's the same thing, but here you have others who help you see what you cannot see or are not willing to see, or it's too painful to see. Let me come back to this one point that you mentioned. Um, I like that one, um, agility. Yes. Agility to react to a situation. Yes. Um, yes. I could immediately relate to this when you, uh, when, when you told me um, about this. So I'm going back to my example. Um, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's a fictional one. Huh? It's not really happening, but uh, okay. actually sometimes it's happening, but uh, usually <laughs> okay. we manage. But, so we are welcoming a guest. Uh, actually, I was last week with the guest uh, uh, coming to Switzerland for some neurological problem. Um, we went to the clinic um, and it was, it was, the doctor was actually not in the clinic, but he was in his own practice, which we didn't know. So uh, not a major issue. We drove down five minutes, but for me at that point, a lot of stress, right? Yeah. Um, now for me, when I, when I, when I go, go back to your concept of yeah. agility and reinterpreting, yes. um, yes. I, I, I would need to tell me, look, that's a stress, tr stressful situation. Something went, went, didn't went right, didn't go right. But yes. now, nothing you can do about it, right? Yeah. So um, you need to adapt and you need to solve. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, is that the, the, the kind of learnings you provide with the external coaches or? Yeah, so it's, it's the reality was in that situation, the key is if you show up fully engaged, which I know you do, Peter, right? With everything you have, with full presence, full capacity, You are doing your best and then you let go. I don't want to use the next word, which I do is let God, but because some people don't like the word God. And then it is what it is. So you went in, you realized that you, it wasn't the appropriate choice. You were in the wrong place, quote unquote, right? And then it's, it is what it is. It will pass. And now what? And then boom. But the thing is that you need to build that muscle in terms of that mental muscle and that emotional muscle to be able to shift into that gear. And that's why I was referring to COVID. A lot of the families we were taking care of because they had filled the cups and because they had learned to build resilience, they were able to adapt much faster in the shock of COVID mm -hmm. than others. And they were also open to listen to solutions because remember Asia was first, Europe came two months later. So we already had a little bit of a training 
plus we had SARS. Okay, so we had special training, you know, in <laughs> Hong Kong, we had even more training because of the protests. So we were already able to work online. Okay, mm-hmm. so we were super prepared, right? So you understand. So the thing is that how do we build that muscle? It's like going to the gym. You go to the gym and you work out and you build that muscle. Are we building the, the mental muscle? Are we building the emotional muscle? And are we building the relational muscle? Yeah. So there's the muscle and the cup. And as that muscle is built, it becomes automatic. It's an auto response. You don't have to think and be like, you know, yes, for a second, you can say, Peter, mm, not a good choice. And then boom, because it's not about it's living in the blame and shame. And that's what a lot of people get stuck in. Mm. They stay in blame and shame. Mm. And then they're not able to move forward. Because if you stay calm, you stay centered. Yes, you're not happy with what is, but you stay calm and centered. The clarity will come. But if you're not calm and centered and not trusting that life is happening in perfection, the clarity will not come. And then you start getting raffled. And, mm-hmm. and then, you have, then you have a situation, mm-hmm. which I know you didn't have because you were able to pivot, right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, that was not the most difficult thing. But yeah. <laughs> it's these, it, it's these uh, uh, situations um, yes. that, that somehow can affect your health. And I guess everybody can relate to them. Um, Faisal, we don't want to have, the, we don't want these um, uh, podcasts or video casts to be too long. That's why I'm, yes. I'm going to my last question. Yes. Um, we're talking about better aging. Yes. Your three go-to tips to age well and age healthy. Number one, sleep. Make sleep the number one priority. Without rest and recovery, your nutrition and your movement fitness is compromised. So make sleep number one. Number two, really invest in self-care and self-love in whatever form that is, right? From the physical space, the mental, emotional, the relational, really work on that piece because your relationship, your outer is a reflection of your inner, right? So really work on that get the support, have people support you on those reflections, right? And the third is, I know it's oversaid and thought, figure out the purpose that's beyond you and see that you're living in integrity between your values, your talents, your aspiration to live with purpose because with purpose, you stay connected and with connection, you live longer. So those would be my three core Pieces. I know they're not simple to achieve, Peter, but that's what I strive for every day. And uh, let's see what happens. Super. Fezal, um, we will share your contact information uh, just in case someone is interested in, in, in getting in touch. Um, thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's been a real pleasure. I hope we can do that again, um, maybe for a second uh, video cast. Um, we will also share where you are Uh, where how, how you can be reached. So anyone interested in talking to Faisal or his company or to his approach, please uh, feel free to do so. Faisal, thank you so much. Um, thank you. We will thank see you. you hopefully soon and um, all the best. Thank you, Peter, for having me and thank you everyone for, for listening and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. <laughs>